TV News at 8. The man linked to assaults in Fort Collins last year will be serving time in prison. Plus, we got an exclusive interview with a CSU student who is up for one of the nation's most prestigious scholarships. And see how CSU's cutest pup celebrated National Puppy Day. CTV News starts right now. Welcome back from Break Rams. I'm Carson Bush Shows. And I'm Rachel Vial filling in for Caitlin Connolly tonight. Well, we start out with breaking news tonight. The suspect linked to many assaults in Fort Collins last year pled guilty to multiple felony charges yesterday. 27-year-old Jose Alderete Gomez will be serving time in prison for two cases against him. Alderete Gomez was arrested November 21st by the Larimer County Sheriff's Office and Monday pleaded guilty to Class 4 second degree assault for the string of assaults in the fall and the Class 5A felony of attempted second degree assault for a domestic violence case. A harassment charge was also added to the case. He could be ordered to the Colorado Department of Corrections for a sentence of at least six years. Alderete Gomez is in custody at the Larimer County Detention Center on a combined bond of $450,000. Sentencing is scheduled for May 18th. Yesterday, firemen and police responded to a fire alarm at the Plant Sciences building. According to firemen at the scene, a burnt motor on the roof of the building caused the alarm to go off. Four fire trucks and two police cars responded to the alarm. Classes were interrupted by the alarm and everyone was evacuated. Professors and students in the building at the time said they could smell the smoke but did not actually see smoke or the fire. The student who died in Westfall Hall last month died of natural causes according to a Larimer County office statement released on Friday. The student, freshman sociology major Jordan Ray Tuisospo, was found February 5th in her residence hall. No drugs or alcohol were found in her system, and a congestive cardiac failure was found to be the most likely cause of death. More than $239 million in bond sales were secured by the Colorado State University System Thursday for construction of the new on-campus stadium. According to a press release, $220 million of the bonds will be used towards construction, which is set to begin this summer. The remainder will be used towards interest payments on the bonds before construction of the facility is completed. The university is planning to issue another round of bonds at $160 million for other construction projects on campus, including the new medical center, additional parking, relocation of the plant environmental center, and a biology building. The new stadium will be built on West Lake Street and Meridian Avenue with the capacity of 40,000 spectators. The stadium will open in time for the 2017 football season. How would you like to get a $30,000 scholarship to grad school? Two students at CSU are finalists for one of the nation's most prestigious scholarships and we talked to one about her experience so far and got some insight on the rigorous application process. What makes the Truman special is that it specializes in public service. Kaylin Taylor is a senior studying soil and crop sciences and organic agriculture, and she's also one of 201 finalists nationally for the Harry S. Truman Scholarship, a $30,000 award that recognizes students for exceptional leadership potential. And she has plenty of leadership. Kaylin currently works at the USDA through work study. We're doing soil analysis and stuff for farmers to um, kind of guide them or give them direction in fertilizer and cover crops and water requirements. Kaylin's already proved her leadership through hard work and dedication. The Truman Scholarship is rigorous as it requires three letters of recommendation, extensive hours of community service or student government, a high GPA of course, and anyone who could use $30,000, which is about all of us. These requirements are just the beginning. To be a finalist, you must first get nominated by a CSU rep. Next, your application goes through a seven-person panel at CSU who has to pass it. You then represent CSU at a national competition where this year there was over 800 applicants, which was cut down to 200. After that, regional finalists from five states from around Colorado were interviewed by panelists down in Denver asking tough questions such as where they see themselves in the next 10 years. Kaylin keeps making the cut and she had some ending wisdom to those future applicants. The questions that are asked on there, like I said, they're asking you to look at where you want to be in 10 years, you know, seven years after your graduate program and it seems really overwhelming or it seems really easy just to kind of like be like, oh yeah, whatever, like I'll probably be doing this or doing that. But my advice would be to like seriously meditate on those questions and think about them very, very deeply because it's kind of amazing what comes out. Kaylin won't find out until April 15th if she received the award. We wish her the best of luck as well as Jason Sidoriak, the other CSU finalist. 
A CSU fraternity is applying for a house despite protests from neighbors. Pi Kappa Tau is a recently started fraternity and now has over 54 members and is looking to move into a nine-bedroom house on Elizabeth Street. But at a recent town hall meeting in February, the fraternity received protests from the neighbors in the area. Pi Kappa Tau says that they are suffering from harsh criticism and they are working on an amendment for the Planning and Zone Board to approve. The fraternity wants to show that they can be a benefit to the community. Coming up after the break, weather anchor Elizabeth Prossy will be with us with her weather forecast. Plus, we'll have a sports update from Grace Reader. Stay tuned. The Ram Skeller offers a traditional pub menu, 20 beers on tap, and even fresh to order pizza coming soon. Stop by Sweet Sensations for a delicious bakery item, espresso, or any other coffee needs you may have. Hi, welcome to Aspen Grill. Aspen Grill is a student-operated restaurant located in the University Club. The food court features a number of different restaurants to satisfy your needs between classes. It's cold outside today, Rams. What better way to warm up than to gather in the LSC? The new and improved Senate Chambers located in the renovated ASCSU office was modeled to match the state legislature in Denver. Reserve the Long's Peak Meeting Room in Room 302. There are approximately 23 other new meeting rooms designed for your needs. Reserve one of these rooms through the Event Planning Office. Welcome back, Rams. I'm weather anchor Elizabeth Prosty with your latest weather update. Now, did someone say red? Well, I did because today we were under a red flag warning. Now, what this means is conditions were highly favorable for a fire to occur, but fortunately, no fires were reported here in Fort Collins. Now, looking outside, we can see it is a nice evening, but that will change. Now, currently here in Fort Collins, it is 53 degrees, and we do have winds coming out of the west, so it does feel more like 45 degrees. Definitely a night that you will want a coat or jacket if you're out and about. Now let's take a look at those overnight lows. We can see that it's going to be a lot cooler. 34 in Lamar, 36 in Bones, but look at this below freezing alignment. And then we've got 30s along the I-25 corridor. Now taking a look at that evening planner, we will say goodbye to the winds, but hello to the clouds. So tonight is not a night I would recommend if you want to go stargazing. Now, we have a cool front moving through tomorrow, so our highs for tomorrow are going to be a lot cooler than what we saw today. Grand Junction is going to be 55, 40 in Gunson. Look at this in Vail, right above freezing. We've got 57 in Pueblo, 49 in Colorado Springs, 47 in Denver, but then here in Fort Collins, we'll get just to 50 degrees. Take a look at your Wednesday plans. You head out tomorrow morning. We will have clouds, but once we hit that new mark, we will have a good chance of rain, and look at this. We even have a snow flurry, too, that might mix in with that rain tomorrow afternoon because the atmosphere will be cold enough that there is that chance. So don't be surprised if you do see a snowflake or two tomorrow afternoon into those evening hours. But the good news is looking at that seven-day forecast, Friday, things start clearing up, and it's going to be what I call a nearly perfect weekend. Saturday, we do have a home meet, so it's a great chance if you want to go cheer on our Ram, CSU Ram track team. 77 degrees, almost 80 degrees on Saturday. Grace, you picked a perfect weekend to go camping. Look at this, lows in the 40s. And then Monday, we're going to have the clouds start coming back in, but it's still going to be a great weekend. Now, March is typically the snowiest month, but as you can see, we're going to be closing out the month a lot warmer and drier than normal. Now, Rachel and Carson, I am not complaining about these warm temperatures. Yeah, me either. It's such oh. a tease for summer, though. Tomorrow, not looking so well, but Saturday, Sunday, wow. It's going to be, gonna be nice. Almost 80. I know. It's going to make it hard to go outside and study. I feel like spring break has just continued. Right? Seriously. Now, how was your spring break? It was really nice. I went home to Texas, and did you know that it was actually warmer here in Colorado than it was back in Texas? That's mm -hmm. shocking. I it, stayed in Colorado, and so I had all the warm weather with me. <laughs> mm -hmm. 81 degrees in Denver set some record highs last week. Crazy in the weather world. Yeah, it always is. <laughs> well, we got Grace over in the Sports Center. What's up with Ram Sports, Grace? I have some good news and some bad news. I like to start with good news, so we're going to begin with a little football talk. Garrett Grayson did not attend the NFL Combine this year due to an injury to his hamstring. However, that was probably for the better, as CSU players didn't have the best performances at the event. However, he did show, have a fantastic showing yesterday during his pro day right here in Fort Collins. Grayson attracted 16 NFL scouts, including two scouts from the Browns and the Packers, and one from the Broncos, the Bills, the Bengals, the Lions, the Vikings, the Raiders, no, 
the, J the Jets, and the St. Louis Rams. He did not fail to please as he completed 70 out of 74 passes and ran a 40-yard dash in 4.72 seconds, which is pretty darn good for a quarterback. I predict that Grayson will be drafted in the second or third round of the NFL draft after this performance, so that reflects really well on CSU and on the strong defense that offense, excuse me, that Jim McElwain created during his time here. Now for the bad news. If you were laying on a beach all spring break and didn't have time to tune into CSU sports, you only missed a dismal end to the basketball season. The women's basketball team won the Mountain West during the regular season, only to get beat by the eighth seed during the Mountain West tournament. Boise went on to win the tournament, which qualified them for an NCAA tournament spot. The Rams then moved on to the WNIT, where they were upset by UNC in the first round. More bad news, it was a similar story for the men. Wyoming took the Mountain West tournament title this year, which also landed them in the NCAA tournament. This left CSU as the first seed in the NIT. The Rams were upset by South Dakota State in the first round, and not only by a little. They lost by 10 points. Guys, I'm ready for football season to start again. Back to you. Thanks, Grace. In other sports news, Colorado State was without an athletic director since Jim Gr or Jack Graham excuse me, was let go back in August. But now the university has finally made a hire. Joe Parker is the new AD for the Rams. The former deputy athletic director for Texas Tech was brought in on Tuesday. Parker comes in after one of the most successful years in Colorado State history. Where the football team won 10 games, the volleyball team made the Sweet 16, and the men and women's basketball team each won 27 games. Well, after the break, we take a look at some of the cutest Ram pups who celebrated National Puppy Day yesterday. Rachel, who doesn't love puppies? I definitely love puppies. We'll be right back. <laughs> Having one of those days where you need to just get out of your head and chill out? If that's the case, head to the Lori Student Center and relax. One of the best spots to relax in the LSC is outside the food court on the Plinth Lawn. Don't forget to stop by the Ramhead Fountain. The Level 100 Commons is the perfect spot. Lounge by the flat screen TVs or enjoy one of the gaming chairs to escape the daily grind. You can always relax in the LSC. Oh, hey there, Rams. Today is a great day to play in the LSC. So let's take a look at our ballrooms, theater, and art galleries. The LSC ballrooms, which are the busiest venue in Northern Colorado, have been recently renovated. The Lori Student Center Theater can be transformed to feature films, concerts, lectures, entertainment, and banquets. And last but not least, the Kerfman Gallery provides a showcase for the creations of local and student artists. Welcome back from the break. As many of you know, yesterday was a National Puppy Day. The best day ever, right? <laughs> and the Ram family sent some adorable pictures of them and their pooch. While they might not all be puppies anymore, they're still adorable. Let's take a quick look here. Oh my gosh, look at the puppy dog eyes. Okay, the one in the middle is just adorable. So cute. Well, they're super cute as well, but the, the middle one I really I like. definitely agree, and that's so much puppy dog love right there. Some golden labs. Everybody loves a lab, right? <sighs> yes. Oh, the one on the shoulder right there. Just just chilling. That's a cutie. <laughs> so cute. <laughs> oh, look at the guy on the right. Oh, gosh. That's, that's my baby right there, Scout. <laughs> uh, a lot of labs on there, though. That's oh a pretty famous, uh, popular dog, yes, I would say. Yes, huh? definitely is. And now you don't have, you haven't had a puppy, I've no. never had a dog. Never. It breaks my heart. No, my parents never got one. But they said when I graduate that they will buy me a dog, so. Okay, well, there you go. I know, it's Just exciting. a little time. Yes. And as most of you can all tell by walking on the plaza since being back from break, ASCSU is changing, is campaigning is underway. <laughs> Presidential and vice president candidates have been announced for the voting period, and the voting period is April 6th through the 8th. CTV will have special coverage of the debate live on Channel 11 and be streaming on Collegian.com next Wednesday, April 1st. Be sure and watch CTV News tomorrow, 8.30, for more ASCSU. ASCSU election coverage. Well, that is all the time we have for tonight, but be sure and check out all of our content on thecollegian.com. That's right, and be sure and follow us on Twitter at Collegian C. Good night, everyone.